So what's good YouTube, it's been a minute. This is my 2017 BMW M140. The car currently has a stage two BM3 off the shelf map. It's running about 470 brake and 700 newton meters of torque. So today we have the R Sport heat exchanger to install. This is kind of imperative to keeping them intake temperatures down. I could have picked from many, many different brands. They all essentially do the same thing, but this was the brand that jumped on board with me and wanted to support the build. <laughs> The B58 doesn't come with an intercooler, it comes with a heat exchanger. And to be honest, when you go above 600 brake horsepower, it really starts to struggle with intake temperatures. So this is a really cheap way of getting a good bang for buck. And it's really fairly easy to do. So I'm gonna whip out the old one, I'm gonna compare the two, and I'm gonna show you how to do that the whole way from start to finish. There's six screws along the bottom, there's four along the top, and then there's two either side of the bumper, which are quite hard to get to. Difficulty is there's two screws that go in this way through the bumper, longer screws, and they fit in like this. So you have to get in underneath the arch lining and up there, and it's very, very hard. They're a lot longer than all the other ones, so it's very, very difficult. You do it bit by bit by bit and it turns. It's very, very hard to get off and there's two either side. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take off all of these bolts here to access the rad pack here. So I can see exactly what we're working with and then go from there. So obviously it's one, two, three, four, five, six, six bolts there, all the bolts surrounding it as well. And then we'll have a look at what we're looking at. The main center bolts are a T45. So that's the two main ones there. All of these other ones here, they are all T27. And then these two up here are a T, T30. All right, so then you loosen it all up and then this piece should come off. And you have know, moved the crash bars from here. I'm painting them. And then this just pulls up this side. And then down here, right in there, I don't know if you can see that. There's this little screw that you pull out. And as you pull it out, you push this down. This is snapped, but you're meant to push it down and around it. So this should come off and give us proper access, but as you can see, everything's exposed at the front. We need to try and gain access to this bit. So there's two screws on the side, one right here on the inside, and it is a T20. So I'm gonna do take off that one. There's another one here. So hopefully this little panel should then come off and gain us access. I can see better what I'm trying to do. All right, so now we have got the heat exchanger exposed. It's the front one that needs to come out. So I've got to work out how to get this off first. I know there's two pipes either side. Once I've done that, I'll show you the difference between the stock one and the upgraded one. All right, so we've lifted out this clip and that clip at the top, and then that comes off to free up here. This clip comes up. I've removed off the, um, the pipe that goes here just to give us a bit more space. So the fan, the radiator and the heat exchanger should all come out as one once we've disconnected the electrics and all the, the pipe work that has got the coolant going through. So then we should be able to do it all as one and reassemble it as new. There's a screw here and here that need to come out. Then disconnect the electrics and tuck it upwards and then the fan can come out fairly easily. So now we have to disconnect the pipes at the bottom on the left and the right. This will now allow us to remove this and gain access to the heat exchanger at the front. So this is the original heat exchanger. You can see how thin that is. Really, really thin, really flimsy, not fit for purpose. And then you look at this one, look at the thickness on that. You know, it's, I'd probably say it's about 70% bigger. The new heat exchanger is on the tray. I've given the tray a little clean up uh, and I've noticed there's a few dents along here so hopefully that's not going to impact the use but they literally slide in and hook here and then this pipe will go to here and this side once I get that cap off will go to this one. So it just sits on the tray but the extra girth is on the front where it comes out here. This one however down here, if the torch will show you, there's a, there's a pipe that goes over there that's really, really hard and fiddly to get on. Once you've got it on, it's quite easy. And then there's another one 
down here, which is fairly easy to do as well. Right, the heat exchanger is back in, fairly easy to put back on and the radiator is now back on. The thing to bear in mind is these wire clips that go across the hoses, it's best to put these back on before you put the, the, the pipes back on. It just makes it easier, so you just pop it on and when you push it in, it just clicks on. It's much, much easier. Like this one down here would be an absolute nightmare to do afterwards. So it's better to put it on first, right in there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's better to put it on first and then it should just clip on. So we're, we're nearly getting there. It's just a fan to go on next. The fan's connected, the radiator's connected and the heat exchanger are all connected. Everything's wired back on. I've put this pipe back on now for the airflow. Now it's just a case of putting everything else back together. So there's a plastic bit that sits along here, which I took off and then I reconnect the crash bars and everything, which I have now spray painted blue, as you can tell from my fingers. Now the rad pack's back together, it's time to fill the car back up with coolant. So I've got BMW authentic coolant, uh, 25 pound for one. I bought two just in case. So on this car, it's important to know there are three pumps. So there is one for the low pressure and there's two for the high pressure pumps. All right, so what I've done now is I've filled these right up to the maximum. I've squeezed these just to try and get as much air. And as you're squeezing the air, you can see the coolant is jumping around. So I'm just trying to get the air out of the system. And then we have to hop in the car and there's a bleed procedure for both pumps. So I'm gonna do the low pressure one first and I'll show you that. And then I'll show you the high pressure one afterwards. It's, it's advisable to hook the battery up to a charger, just a trickle charger, just so the battery doesn't go dead while it's doing the procedure. Now it's time to start the first bleed procedure on the low pump. So you've got to turn on without starting, so that's accessory mode. You just press start stop, press that once. Then you come over here, you turn the lights on, full beam, not on automatic. Then you will turn on the heating. You turn that right up onto the higher setting. And then the fan on the lowest setting. So just like that. We've got to turn on the hazards and hold down the accelerator for 15 seconds. And you should start to hear whirring. You can hear the noise now, you can hear the whirring. The fan started. Right, so I took the opportunity, like I said earlier, to take this crash bar off and I just sprayed it, just a bit of etch primer on it bit of blue just to show through the, the black grills but you can hear the whirring and I'm just keeping topping up this the low pressure one as it's sucking through and it's bleeding and just topping it back up now it's time to start the second pump it's a similar procedure but this time instead of pressing this once you press it three times very quickly okay you press that three times you turn the lights on you turn the fan on like you did before highest temperature lowest setting Hold down accelerator for 15 seconds. That then starts the second procedure and you will hear a whirring noise. To start the third procedure, from here, you literally just need to press the start button and hold down the accelerator for the car to start and the car will automatically know it's in the third and final procedure. Then you need to rev your engine to about 3000 RPM and hold for 10 seconds. And then after you've hold it, held it for 10 seconds, you let it go ideally for about 30 seconds. And then you do that again. You have to do this about 10 times to get all that coolant around the system and make sure that the whole system is bled. So if I turn it on now, it should automatically know. Now the other fan started and the cold start's gone off, it's still held at around 1100 RPM. This is now where you have to hold down the accelerator for until it gets to about 3000 RPM, between 2005 and 3000 RPM for 10 seconds, let it go for 30 seconds and you need to do this about 10 times to get rid of all the air out of the system. Just like that, do that 10 times. After you've done that 10 times, the revs will automatically drop 
and I'll turn off the engine, put the caps back on. I'll leave the car to, for about an hour or two just to rest. Start the car on a cold start, let it just drop the revs back automatically. Take it around the block for a spin. And then as long as the coolant level doesn't drop below the minimum and the maximum level, you're good to go and everything should be fine. And you just enjoy the car. If at any stage you come back and you check the cooling and it's dropped down again, you need to re-bleed the system. That's obviously telling you that the system hasn't been fully bled. So that then means you need to go all the way back through that cycle until it stops dropping the level. That's when you know the coolant has been fully bled and the system is good to go.